Welcome to Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS, a job costing, full accounting, and profit management software for the professional home builder. This video is going to be what I call a quick overview of one of the most important windows that we have in CHS and one of the reasons I always say this is why you have CHS. The window that I'll be talking about is called the Estimated Costs at Completion window and I'm going to open it by clicking this button under Jobs Project Management, it says Budget, Estimates, etc. And we're going to open a window that shows a list of jobs with budgets and jobs without budgets. You can see these various jobs have budgets and the total of their budgets. And if you drill down you can see some more information about these jobs. Then you can also see something called Worksheet, ECC Work. If you hover over it, it says Open ECC Worksheet, which is what I'm going to do and what I'm going to talk about in this video. So let's click on that link for our demo job, H11 River. It's going and gathering for you all kinds of numbers um, that have been posted in various areas of the program, bringing them together and calculating your current estimated cost at completion. What I'd like to show you is this help button and if you click it and you and you drop down that one you can click and close and open. There is a help document about estimated cost at completion which I've already opened and when you open it it will end up up here if you have Firefox it's usually the best um, in another tab and you can see that I call the estimated costs at completion, or we refer to it as ECC. It's the dashboard for the builder owner to see all at a glance. CHS is gathering this data for you from various areas of the program and is really made to help you do away with all those time-eating spreadsheets that are going to show you where you are headed on a job. If you're doing Excel spreadsheets to try to get this, you have to update those every day, hope that you don't type something wrong from your actual costs, etc. But CHS is going to be doing that for you. It is meant for the builder or the owner to put hands on to review the current status of jobs and profit. I really encourage that the builders put their hands on the program, open CHS, and at least use this window to review where the job is at. They're automatically gathered for you, like I say, from everywhere in the program. And CHS does this by bringing the data together. This help document and my various other videos will be about how um, estimated costs at completion are calculated, how to review your estimated profit, etc. Um, so what I want to do is, in this video, I want to quickly go over this um, estimated cost at completion worksheet and then I'd like to show you some various things that CHS can do to um, show you where your profit is at, et cetera, et cetera. First of all, um, let's sort of break this down. These are your cost codes that you've set up all in a row and grouped by their group heading that you have put them under. If you click um, this first column here, if you have set up job stages and attached them to cost codes, you can drill down and see some information about the budget and where it's at. So that gives you a good uh, review of that and what dates, but we'll skip by that and do that a little bit more in my more detailed videos. This first column is your original budget. And if you um, drill down on it, which you can do, you can see various notes that have been written. You can see how it was calculated. You can see that um, the various measurements for the job. You can see the building contracts, what they were made up of, because you can look, I mean, not building, building permits, um, because you can see the detail here. You can also see if there are items behind the budget that were built. Um, if you've watched budget videos, etc you'll see that you can set up items behind a budget uh, line. And so you can see the detail of that right here from the estimated cost of completion window. Now, the second column over is for the estimated costs of any change orders that you've posted. You'll see a total of all those here. This is your cost, not the home buyer's cost. And you can drill down, see what you estimated the cost to be, what the price is, and what the total profit is 
if there was more than one change order for that particular cost code, plan costs, architect fees, you would um, see that there. The next column over adds those two together, the original budget plus estimated cost of change orders to come up with basically what I would call a revised budget. Um, the next column is for any variance POs, which you can see by drilling down on all the POs, um, just so that they'll stand out. Variance POs are usually issued if you're issuing a PO for something you um, hadn't considered in the budget or you made an error or something got damaged, etc. And you can watch PO videos about that. You can, the next column is all POs that have been issued for this particular cost code. You can drill down on that and see the purchase orders that have been issued um, for, the, for the job and the cost code. It actually opens a POs and job cost management window which is going to show you your POs. You can see there's three of them with numbers and any posted costs for that cost code. Um, the costs that have been attached to the PO, how much over or under the PO there is. And this first one is some posted costs um, that was, were not attached to a PO. And you can drill down to review those from here and do some editing of those um, if needed to reattach a PO, etc. But we won't go into that much detail here. Um, and to the right of the purchase order column, there's a plus PO. Um, if you haven't issued any POs yet and you want to issue a PO for um, something that's budgeted but you don't see any POs here, you could start a new PO by doing that plus PO. Now let's talk for a minute about the next column, which is a builder revise column. Notice that originally $500 was budgeted. POs were issued for $450, but the builder has typed in a revision of $425. If the builder had written any notes, um, internal notes about why they did that, maybe they just can type in here something about talk to so-and-so, whoever it is that does the specs, plats, blueprints, and I know it's only going to be $425. You might be doing that on a much bigger item, but um, I'm just using this for example. And the builder typed in 425. By doing that, whatever's typed in here in the builder revision column will rule, and your estimated cost at completion, despite the fact that you budgeted 500, issued POs even for 450, um, your estimated cost at completion will become what the builder typed in as the revision as long as actual posted costs are not higher than that. Um, let's go ahead and uncheck that to talk about some other columns. I mean, let's put a zero back in there. I just wanted you to see that for a minute. And notice that it's refreshing things for us so that it'll recalculate the ECC. Um, we have check marked over here, and I want to go back to this column to use lower POs as the EC, but what ECC, but watch what happens if I uncheck to use lower POs. It's now going to take the original budget and use that as the ECC unless I tell it to use the lower POs. This next column over here is for actual costs that have been posted through posting bills, etc. You can drill down on them and see a report of those actual costs and what they're made up of and decide whether or not maybe they are done or um, you've posted all costs that you're ever going to have. The pencil edit icon to the right that I just clicked of those actual costs will actually open a window where you can do some editing of these actual costs um, like perhaps you need to edit the cost code, it's put to the wrong cost code things like that. So you can see how you can get to that pretty quickly. Um, let's see what happens if we decide that all the actual costs have been posted and that we won't have any more and we check mark it as done. You can see that now our ECC is 401 and that down here there's something called refresh totals button suddenly showing up. And I don't refresh every time you do a check mark, etc., just to save time because it takes a little bit to refresh and gather the totals. So as soon as you do a check mark, it'll disappear and give you that button for refresh totals. So you can see that now what the ECC is, and if you click on the ECC amount itself, you can see the budget was 500, purchase orders were 450, um, actual 
posted costs are 471 and they're check marked as done. So this is how the estimated cost at completion was arrived at. There are some explanations here that will tell you about where it got the number, but you can see how automatically CHS is doing that for you on that line and that this line is showing minus 99. Now it's under budget. It's under the $500 total budget um, by $99. And this total over budget amount is a total of, of this entire column. It's easy to spot things that are over budget and start studying on why that might be. I'm going to do a detailed video about how this is allowing you to spot that probably somebody posted, if you drill down on the actual costs, um, posted this $500 and it even says final grade here. They posted it to site work instead of to final grade. Um, and I'm going to show some videos about how from this window you can drill down and correct both the PO and the actual costs so that they get on the correct line so that this won't be showing over budget and this will be these two will be showing right on target. The other um, things over here, what, and I'll have some detailed videos about this, is it's calculating the percent done, but if you decide you want to type in the percent done yourself so that you can produce some outstanding um, unpaid costs for things that are completed based on the percent that you have entered. You can do that. That's what that column is about. This column is showing you how much of this $800, well, let's don't use that one. It's kind of bad. Um, you can see how much of this $401 is paid, so outstanding is zero. You can see that $527 um, of this is paid, and based on the ECC, the outstanding is two, $209, etc. So anyway, hopefully that gives you a fairly quick overview of how this is a dashboard for the builder and how many things that you can see right from here. Before I leave this, and, and I'll talk a little bit about reports and a little bit about a couple of things, but I don't want to get too detailed, but I do want to point out this button that says price slash profit and how CHS can quickly tell you where your revised profit seems to be right now. Um, notice that this is marked as a cost plus markup job. And notice over here, this is the current ECC total. And notice that we typed in 25% for this cost plus markup. We're going to mark things up 25% and collect all costs. We're going to mark up by 25%, whether they're change order costs, because this is a cost plus markup job, and that's the nature of the job. Um, and you can see here that it took the budget plus the markup, and that comes from your job budget worksheet, this 427 marked up amount, 427,000 something, minus the job budget, and this is our original estimated profit, 85,474. But this one is taking the current ECC, which is coming from the totals on that ECC worksheet, adding 25% of that to it, which is now 88000 and coming up with what your current revised price is. And therefore, it can figure out what your current revised estimated profit is, which is that revised price minus the current ECC. And here's your profit of 88000 instead of 85, showing over here that you're right today estimating that your profit difference would be uh, $28,000 higher, which can happen on cost plus markup. Um, let's go over to a cost plus fee. Let's change it to that and see how CHS reacts to that. After check marking this job to be a cost plus fee instead of a cost plus markup, you can see that CHS has recalculated some things. First of all, the builder had typed in a builder fee based on some, typing in 20% tier. Um, and getting the suggested builder fee that should be used based on the job budget um, to get a 20% profit percent. There's little question mark buttons here that will show you the difference between markup and, and profit percent. Down here, here's the budget plus the fee, which is the 427 minus the job budget. Here's your original estimated profit, and since it's a cost plus fee, 
it's taking the estimated cost right now, the current estimated cost at completion, plus that builder fee, plus any change order fees. And by fees, if I drill down on them, it means the difference between um, the price that you charge for it and the estimated cost that you that you um, estimate your change orders to be and the estimated profit on that. The difference between those two are fees that you'll be collecting for the change orders. So those get added to cost plus fee jobs to come up with a revised price minus the current ECC. And you'll actually see on a cost plus fee that the profit difference will be the change order fees because you set a fee in your contract for that. Now let's see what happens if we change check mark this to a fixed contract and how CHS reacts to that immediately. Um, first of all, the builder typed in a price, which was the price that CHS suggested if you wanted a 20% profit percent based on the job budget that you had done. The fixed price that the builder typed in, less the budget uh, is this profit, comes out to 20%. Here's the fixed price again plus any change order prices, which if, if you drill down, you'll see that same kind of report we saw a minute ago. It is the total price, plus any allowance over under adjustments, which CHS is handling for you based on costs you've posted in the estimated cost at completion, to figure out right now what it's thinking that allowance adjustment will be based on the current estimated cost at completion to get your revised price. And then that revised price minus your current ECC shows what your revised profit is being expected to be as of today and the revised profit percent which is down a little which can happen because it's fixed and you don't have an agreement that they're going to pay for all costs etc that you've posted and if your costs are heading you know hot over your budget and you haven't done change orders or they're not allowances you might start going down a little and want to decide oh I need to make up some costs somewhere else because I'm starting to head over. So that's a real good clue for that. And I really like to point this window out and show you how much CHS is reacting to the estimated cost at completion and giving you some good analysis information. If you click the big reports button up here, there are all sorts of reports based on your preference. You can see the total ECC without any notes. You can see it with all notes, buyer and internal notes. Um, you can see some detail of all the costs and the ECC. You can get a summary. You can get a report of outstanding unpaid costs based on um, the ECC and percents that you've entered uh, for it, some reports of your actual cost detail, etc. Examples of various ones of these reports are behind the Help button, and you can open those. Um, one more thing, back on the list of jobs with budgets, I'd like to show you this job summaries averages button here and this one report that says profit and cash status of open jobs. And if you remember the last, uh, you'll see that this is a report that groups by cost plus fee, cost plus markup, and fixed. And we did just check mark that one as fixed. And if you pause this and study these columns, you'll see that our revised profit variance is going down on this job a bit. Um, up on some other jobs. Uh, probably with all my demos I'm always I'm going down because I start demoing going over budget etc. The other thing that you can see over here is how much cash you have available, how much has been contributed by the job, how much unpaid accounts payable have been posted as of today, and how much cash you have available which this one is short a bit for paying these unpaid payables. So you can get some good ideas of where you're at cash-wise and profit-wise and really analyze all of your open jobs, which is very important for a professional home builder to do. And this is using the estimated cost at completion um, to, to get a revised estimated profit and a profit variance. So it's very important that the builder puts hands on that estimated cost at completion worksheet, does the scribbles, as needed if the builder knows something different, um, looks at the POs, can spot things that might have been posted to a wrong cost code like this one, um, et cetera, and bring that to the attention of the person that can make the change or do it themselves, whoever's on this screen by drill, doing some drill down that I'll show in another video. Anyway, thank you for watching and I think maybe you'll get an idea 
of why I say this is one of the biggest reasons that you um, would be using CHS. It accomplishes my goals of bringing everything together from the accounting side and the builder side and giving the builder a good picture of where every single job is at and where his profit, his or her profit, is headed. Thank you for watching.